Dr. S. Nagan. He is an associate professor in civil engineering at Tyagarajar College of Engineering, Madurai. He pursued his undergraduate and postgraduate studies from Tyagarajar College of Engineering and completed his PhD at the Madurai Kamarajar University. He has more than 20 years of teaching and research experience. He has worked in many prestigious institutions including PSNA, College of Engineering and Technology, Dindigal. He has published more than 25 research papers and 5 books under his name. Apart from all this, he is a life member at the International Society for Environmental Protection and also at the Indian Society for Technical Education. To add to all of this, he is one the best staff advisor at the ISTE Students Chapter. Welcome to UGC lecture series for Bachelor of Architecture. This lecture covers unit 4 of the subject mechanics of structures namely columns. We will be studying the various terminologies related to columns. So, the contents will be direct and bending stresses. So, you will see when there will be direct stress and when there will be bending stresses in columns. See the columns are supporting structures in a building. We have seen in earlier lectures that the load distribution, the load distribution takes place from slab to beams and the beams in turn they transmit to columns and columns will be having two types will be having short columns and long columns. In case of short columns will be having crushing stress the phenomena which we will be discussing subsequently and in case of long columns it will be subjected to buckling it fail by buckling. So, short columns fail by crushing and long columns fail by buckling. We will also see the difference between short column and long columns. So, that depends on the slenderness ratio and that also will be discussed while dealing with the theory of long columns. Now, we will see what is a direct stress. In case if a member has load passing through its axis, then we say that as the axial load. So, member subjected to axial load will be subjected to direct stress. Say for example, say we have the column like this the supporting column. So, the axis of the column will be like this, this is the axis of the column. So, if our load is concentrated or load is applied on the axis then we call as direct stress. So, the stress caused by this axial load will be direct stress and we very well know that stress is given by load by cross sectional area. So, direct stress if you want to compute the direct stress sigma d is equal to load divided by cross sectional area load by area. So, simply load divided by the area of cross section will give you the direct stress. On contrary to this we will have bending stress say for example, if the load on the column say if it does not passes through the axis of the column, but if it is applied at some distance from the axis and we will refer to this distance as eccentricity subsequently we will say this term as eccentricity. So, when the load is not concentrated on the axis then we call as this as eccentric load. So, in case of eccentric load we will have bending stress coming into play. So, we will see how bending stress comes into play in case of eccentrically loaded sections. So, we can see this diagram say you take the column and you have the axis of the column. Say let us imagine the load is applied somewhere here P. So, for analyzing problems of this type or cases this uh, type be introducing two equal and opposite forces along the axis of the column. 
will be introducing two equal and opposite forces and which will not affect the original case by introducing a load P and balancing it by another load P we would not be altering the original case. So, that will get balanced however, the procedure of applying equal and opposite loads is to define the bending stress case how bending stress comes into play in case of columns with eccentric loading. So, this we call as the eccentricity the distance between the axis of the column and the line of action of the load is called eccentricity. So, imagine we have introduced two equal and opposite forces. So, what will happen by introducing like this? So, we have the axis of the column, we have the load P. So, by introducing two equal and opposite forces, this the load which is applied down downward along the axis will be causing direct stress sigma d will be causing direct stress sigma d and the downward actually apply downward load and the induced upward load along the axis these two forces will form a couple will form a couple. So, a couple we know is nothing but moment produced by the two equal and opposite forces. So, moment produced will be force multiplied by distance. So, the distance which we have between these two parallel forces are or is given by the eccentricity E. Therefore, the moment will be produced but to a magnitude of P into E to a magnitude of P into E. So, that what has been mentioned here the bending moment of magnitude P into E will be caused if we introduce two equal and opposite forces. So, the axial load which is acting along the axis downward will cause direct stress and these two forces that is the originally applied eccentric load and the upward load acting along the axis they will form a couple of value P into E. So, bending moment comes into play whenever you have bending moment then we will have bending stress. So, a column subjected to eccentric loading will be having direct stress as well bending stress as explained in this diagram. So, how to calculate the value of the bending stress? We have studied in the earlier chapters that bending stress is given by say we have our basic equation m by i equal to f by y and from which say f is here it is nothing but sigma b bending stress therefore, it will be equal to m y by i. So, bending stress is calculated using the formula m y by i where m is the bending moment. So, bending moment will be equal to the load multiplied by eccentricity p into e and this y equal to extreme pi bar distance y equal to extreme pi bar distance. So, that the extreme pi bar distance will be like this say if we have a column if you have this uh, let me draw the plan of the column. So, the axis of the, the x and y axis of the column say let the load be applied here let the load be applied concentrated here and this is our x x axis and this is our y y axis. So, the load is eccentric the load is eccentric with respect to y y axis the load is eccentric with respect to y y axis. So, we need to find the extreme fiber distance from the y y axis about which bending takes place. So, in our equation of m y by i as we discussed here that is m y by i y is the extreme fiber distance and y we have b by 2 is we have taken a case of a column we have taken a case of a column subjected to an eccentric load that eccentricity is with respect to y axis. So, this is eccentricity. So, we can say bending takes place about y y axis. Therefore, what is the extreme pi bar distance with respect to this y y axis? So, that will be equal to this. So, if the width of the column is b, if the width of the column is b, then this extreme pi bar distance will be equal to b by 2 as mentioned here y equal to b by 2. And similarly, we want moment of inertia moment of inertia is also an important phenomenon in case of bending stress. So, 
the moment of inertia which moment of inertia we need to take because we need to uh, see where the bending moment takes place or about which axis moment bending moment takes place. So, in this diagram bending moment takes place about y y axis therefore, we need to compute i y y. So, the moment of inertia about y y axis will be d b cube by 12 will be d b cube by 12. If we want to find moment of inertia about x x axis then it is b d cube by 12. So, we need to first identify where the load is concentrated and the bending moment takes place about which axis that is more important while computing the bending stress. So, here we have taken a case where load is acting at an eccentricity with respect to y y axis and hence i equal to i y y which is equal to d b cube by 12. Now, substituting the values of moment extreme pi by distance and moment of inertia we get 6 p e by d b squared that is p into e into b by 2 by d b cube by 12 which results in 6 p e by d b squared or 6 p e by area into b. Since, b into d is area we can replace by a. So, 6 p e by a b is the bending stress. Now, if we have direct stress and bending stress then we will have to sum it up. So, if I want total stress I will have to sum it the sum of the direct and bending stress. So, we will be required or we will be interested in maximum stress produced similarly we will also be interested in minimum stress produced. So, the maximum stress will be summation of direct stress and bending stress and the minimum stress will be difference between these two the direct and bending stress. So, if we substitute the value for direct stress as p by a plus or minus 6 p e by a b and taking p by a as common term will result in with p by a into 1 plus or minus 6 e by b. So, this will give you the uh, relationship for finding the total stress in a column subjected to eccentric loading. So, if we want the maximum stress it is given by p by a into 1 plus 6 e by b and if you want minimum stress p by a into 1 minus 6 e by b with which we can calculate the maximum and minimum stress in a section. So, with this knowledge let us work out a small problem say we have a rectangular column which is 150 mm wide and 120 mm thick it carries a load of 180 kilo Newton at an eccentricity of 10 millimeters in a plane bisecting the thickness in a plane bisecting the thickness. So, we need to clearly mark the eccentricity based on the given details. So, the eccentricity is 10 mm in a plane bisecting the thickness say we have two planes. So, one plane will bisect the thickness like this and other plane will bisect the width like this. So, in this problem eccentricity lies in the plane which bisects the thickness therefore, the load is applied either to the right side or to the left side. So, but however, it lies here. So, this is our y y axis and this is our x x axis. So, if this is the case then directly we can use the formula for maximum stress as p by a into 1 plus 6 e by b and minimum stress as p by a into 1 minus 6 e by b. So, p is given as 180 kilo Newton which is equal to 180 into 1000 Newton then eccentricity equal to 10 millimeters as given in the problem area of cross section will be 150 mm width and 120 mm thick. So, 150 into 120 and then we need b. So, b is the dimension width so 150 mm. So, if we substitute the values of p a e and b we will be getting maximum stress as 14 Newton per mm squared and minimum stress as 6 Newton per mm squared the stress distribution normally will be plotted like this. So, this is the thing and we have v axis. So, produce this produce this draw the baseline. So, this side where the load is concentrated you will have maximum stress and where the load is away you will have minimum stress. So, the stress distribution can be drawn like this. So, this will be 14 Newton per mm squared uh, stress and stress here at this uh, phase will be 6 Newton per mm squared. 
in case if the load is applied to the left of y y axis and then this side will be having maximum stress and to the opposite side will have the minimum stress. So, the direct and bending stresses need to be computed based on the given values of load and eccentricity and seeing whether the load produces bending moment about y y axis or x axis. Then if it produces about this axis, then we can directly use the formula p by a into 1 plus 6 e by b and p by a into 1 minus 6 e by b. Now, we will take another example. So, this is a hollow rectangular column 0.8 meter by 1.2 meter and 150 mm thick. So, 0.8 meter width and 1.2 meter depth. So, hollow rectangular column. So, you have been given the thickness of the uh, column as 150 mm or 0 0.15 meter. So, 0 0.15 meter on either side. The overall dimension will be the 0 0.8 meter width, 0 0.8 meter width and the depth is 1.2 meters, 1.2 meters. So, we can keep this as capital B and this is capital D and small b will be the inner dimension small b and small d will be this inner dimension d. So, capital B equal to 0 0.8 meters capital D equal to 1.2 meters and small b will be naturally or definitely this will be 0 0.8 minus 2 times the thickness of the wall of the hollow rectangular section. So, 0 0.8 minus 2 into 0 0.15 which will be 0 0.5 meters and similarly, small d will be the depth 1.2 meters minus 2 times the thickness 0.15. And regarding the eccentricity, we need to carefully watch the eccentricity. So, a vertical load of 2 mega Newton is transmitted in the vertical plane bisecting the 1.2 meter side. So, the eccentricity is 100 mm and the eccentricity lies in the plane which bisects the 1.2 meter side. So, that need to be marked carefully like this that is. So, you have the hollow column rectangular column. So, we will be having two axes like this x x and y y axis. So, this axis bisects the 1.2 meter side and this axis y y axis bisects the 0.8 meter side, but in the given problem it is given that the load acts at an eccentricity or lie the eccentricity lies in the vertical plane bisecting 1.2 meter side. So, the eccentricity will be somewhere here or the load will be applied somewhere here and this is the eccentricity. And for problems like this, so instead of using the formula p by a into 1 plus 6 e by b or 1 minus 6 e by b, we will have we can use this formula or sigma maximum will be equal to p by a plus m by z and sigma minimum equal to p by a minus m by z. So, if we add the direct and bending stress you will be getting maximum stress and if we find the difference between direct and bending stress you will be getting the minimum stress. Now, we will see how the values are calculated. So, the moment m equal to load into eccentricity. So, load is given as 2 mega Newton. So, which will be equal to 2 into 10 power 6 Newton and the distance is or E eccentricity is 100 mm therefore, we get 2 into 10 power 8 Newton millimeters. Then we want the z value z is nothing but section modulus. So, when we have moment of inertia and when we know the extreme fiber distance I by Y normally represents the modulus of section of a rectangular section or any uh, sections. So, this is the section modulus and it will have units of millimeter cube or meter cube or centimeter cube because we have units for moment of inertia as millimeter power 4 and y will be in millimeters therefore, z will be in millimeter cube. And we know that i moment of inertia i we need to consider i y y because the eccentricity takes place in a plane bisecting the 1.2 meter side and hence bending moment takes place about y y axis. So, i y y for a rectangular section will be capital D B cube minus small d b cube by 12. If the eccentricity is uh, lying on the y y axis then it indicates that bending moment takes place about x x axis and in that case we need to compute i x x 
i x x will be capital B d cube minus small b d cube divided by 12. In this case d b cube minus d b cube divided by 12 and y is the extreme fiber distance again we need to find the extreme fiber distance with respect to the axis about which bending moment takes place. So, about the bending moment takes place about y axis again here as, been, as seen in the example 1 we need to uh, find the extreme fiber distance y as this. So, y will be definitely equal to capital B by 2. So, once we know i and y we can compute the z value then using the maximum stress as p by a plus m by z and minimum stress as p by a minus m by z we will be getting the values of maximum minimum stress and the stress can be plotted as before. So, 5.83 2.01 connect. So, this will be the stress distribution diagram for the column. So, we have seen clearly what is the direct stress and what is the bending stress. If there is axial load then direct stress comes into play. If there is an eccentric load both direct and bending stress will come into play and we have seen how uh, the direct stress is created in case of eccentric load and how bending stress is produced in case of the eccentric load. Sometimes we will be having columns having eccentricity about both the axis say you have column a rectangular column and you will be having y y axis and will be having x x axis. The load may be concentrated here. So, in that case say this will be the eccentricity with respect to x x axis we call this as E x and eccentricity with respect to y y axis as E y. So, this we call as biaxial bending this we call as biaxial bending. So, when bending takes place about any one axis it is uniaxial bending and when the bending takes place about both the axis as seen in the diagram it will be biaxial bending. So, in case of columns with eccentric loading about two axes then we will be interested in finding stress at the corners. So, say if this is corner A, corner B, corner C and corner D you will have to compute the stress at the four corners of the column. So, the stress at corners is given by in that case bending about x x axis will be there similarly bending about y y axis will be there. So, we can compute the stresses using the formula P by A plus or minus m x x by z x x plus or minus m y y by z y y. We know that P is the load given load A we can find area of cross section then m x x m x x is bending about about x axis. So, bending moment about x axis will be load multiplied by E x eccentricity with respect to x axis and then z x x z x x equal to i x x divided by y. So, i x x divided by y. So, z x x we need i x x divided by y. So, here how to find the extreme fiber distance. So, we are interested in z x x. So, that means about bending about x axis if take place what will be the extreme fiber distance. So, the extreme fiber distance in this case will be d by 2. So, that was had been mentioned z x x equal to i x x by y where y equal to d by 2 and bending moment about y axis will be load multiplied by E y eccentricity with respect to y axis will cause bending moment m y y. Then z y y equal to i y y divided by x here we call x. So, x means this is again extreme fiber distance. So, at what distance your y y axis is located with respect to the extreme fiber that is x i y y divided by x will give you the z y y value. So, in this case x will be equal to b by 2 overall width is b. So, width divided by 2 will be the x distance and hence we can compute z y y. So, once we know all these values so, loading is known, eccentricity is known, then cross section is known. We can compute the values of P, A, M, X, X, Z, X, X, M, Y, Y, and Z, Y, Y will be in a position to arrive the uh, stress at the corners. So, we will now we will see a numerical example of this type. Say we have a masonry pier of size 4 meters by 3 meters. So, you have a masonry pier of size 4 meters by 3 meters. 
it supports a vertical load of 80 kilo newton as shown in figure. So, it supports a load of 80 kilo newton as shown in figure. So, the eccentricity with respect to x axis is given as 0.5 meter, this is 0.5 meter and eccentricity with respect to y axis is given as 1 meters, given as 1 meters. The load is concentrated here and we are interested in finding the stress in the corners. So, stress at A, stress at B, stress at C and stress at D is required for this biaxially loaded column or load column subjected to biaxial bending moment. So, we know that this 0.5 meter is E x that is eccentricity with respect to x axis and this 1 meter will be E y because it is the eccentricity with respect to y y axis. Now, the stress in corners can be using the formula sigma a is stress at corner a, sigma b stress at corner b and sigma c and sigma d stress at corner c and d respectively. Now, we have the direct and bending stress combination. So, p by a plus or minus m x x by z x x plus or minus m y y by z y y is the general formula and we need to see when it will be plus and when it will be minus. For example, if we take corner A, if we take corner A with respect to x axis, with respect to x axis, the load acts in this side that is in the side of A, our A is also on the same side, the load is in the same side, then we will get compressive stress and hence plus sign need to be used for m x x. Whereas, with respect to y y axis, if you take y y axis, our corner of interest is to the left side of y y axis and load acts to the other side that is right side of the y y axis. So, in that case tensile stress will come into play produced by the m y y therefore, minus m y y by z y y. So, plus sign and minus sign we need to assign based on the stress which it which the load causes to the corners. Similarly, if we take corner b sigma b and it should be noted that always the direct stress is always compressive. So, it will always have positive sign p by a is always positive only the sign will change for m x x m y y. So, when corner b is considered we have the load acting on the same side with respect to x axis and the corner b being on the same side. Now, we will shortly have the uh, overview or what we have studied so far. So, we have studied what is the direct stress, what is the bending stress, how to calculate direct stress, how to calculate bending stress and while dealing with bending stress we have seen what is uniaxial bending, what is biaxial bending and we need to be careful that what distance need to be taken in each case. Say if the load produces eccentricity with respect to y y axis then we will have to compute i y y and similarly the extreme fiber distance need to be calculated from y y axis. Similarly, when the eccentricity with respect to x x axis we need to consider i x x and the extreme fiber distance need to be calculated from x axis. These are the things which are to be borne in mind while calculating the stresses. Similarly, in case of bending stresses uh, subjected to biaxial bending we will have to be careful in finding the uh, compressive and tensile stresses as per the directions. Now, questions. Now, we will be in a position to define direct and bending stress and we will need to identify an axially loaded member and a by eccentrically loaded member. So, what do you mean by axially loaded member and what is meant by biaxial bending? These are the questions which we should know at this stage. Thank you.